oh, everybody's attention span is destroyed. All people can do is read tweets and do like two minute short video things. And I'm like, people sit and play games for four hours at a stretch. Like, people will sit at home and do nothing but play Elden Ring for a day. People are not, their attention span isn't shorter. They just changed what they pay attention to. They pay attention differently. I've worked at a lot of universities uh, in New York City. I love being at City College. I think the students have been really passionate and really diligent about working on games. Who are the consumers of games? And who are the producers of games? And are they representative of each other? Like, do they represent each other? And the answer is no, they're not, right? They're, it, the people who play games do not look like the people who make games in the percentages that you would hope for. And so the mayor's goal in this program is really to change that equation and to change it but here in New York City. The basic structure of what we want to do with Gaming Pathways at City College is introduce students to the primary disciplines that are critical to game development and then help them figure out where they want to focus so that they can move into team-based development in the long run. Because games are made by individual people, but most games are not. Most games are made in multidisciplinary teams. In the plan of study, our intention is to have students take classes in the disciplines of game design, art production, and game programming. And every student gets a foundation in all three of those areas. But the purpose of that is just to introduce them to those topics, make them comfortable with the basics of them, but really help them understand which part of that they might want to do in the industry. And then in the second half of the degree program, they choose what role they want to do, and they start working in teams on that role. We are basically offering uh, three classes right now that are focused specifically on those introductory skills. Uh, one is an introduction to game programming, which is teaching people how to use Unity, which is a major engine that's used in game development today. We've also been offering classes in uh, representation and identity in games, like specifically looking at how games have intersected questions of race and gender and sexuality and class. In the capstone of the program, students just work on teams and make games. They spend a year just making a game. And that game is ready for release uh, to Itch or Steam uh, when the project's finished and can be submitted to student competitions. Uh, this isn't unusual, right? I mean, there's lots of game programs that do that. In fact, there's really good game programs in New York City that do that. The issue is they're private and a private university is gonna charge a private university tuition um, what this program is, and one of the things I'm really excited about, is it, as a public institution, we get the advantages that we have as a public institution, which means it's a much more affordable tuition, it's much more geographically accessible to populations that, that wouldn't necessarily be able to go to these other schools. Um, student, you know, 71% of students at City College graduate debt-free. So you can get a game design degree, a bachelor's in game design and development, learning programming, learning digital arts, learning games on fundamentals from industry experts um, at a fraction of the cost you would pay in these other universities in part as part of the CUNY system in New York City. And that, being part of that project is, is honestly just a dream come true to me.